Jenny Blaylock, recognized in the online YouTube sphere as Tennessee Fly Girl or TN Fly Girl for short, was born in 1978. Hailing from Knoxville, Tennessee, Jenny carved her niche in the digital realm as a notable social media personality, focusing on the exhilarating world of piloting planes. Operating under the moniker TN Fly Girl, her YouTube channel boasted a substantial following of around 20,000 subscribers, showcasing her passion for aviation to an engaged audience. In the realm of Instagram, where visual storytelling takes center stage, Jenny went by the handle 865 Fly Girl, where she accumulated a following of around 2,800 enthusiasts eager to glimpse into her airborne adventures. Her Instagram bio revealed a multifaceted identity, describing her as the owner of two businesses, Lux Homes and Design, suggesting a flair for the aesthetic, and Plantation Reclaimed, perhaps hinting at a commitment to sustainable and reclaimed materials. Jenny Blaylock's online presence not only reflected her love for flying, but also hinted at a dynamic life beyond the clouds. The intersection of her roles as a pilot and an entrepreneur painted a vivid picture of a woman with diverse interests and pursuits. As she shared her experiences through digital platforms, Jenny managed to capture the attention of a community fascinated by both the skies and the entrepreneurial spirit she embodied. Her presence in the digital realm transcended conventional boundaries, as she not only navigated the skies but also captured the hearts of the aviation community with her infectious enthusiasm and unwavering dedication to flying. On December 7, 2023, Jenny Blaylock and James Blaylock, her 78-year-old father, lost their lives in a devastating plane crash over a remote area of Tennessee. The crash site, located near Pulaski and close to the Alabama border, posed significant challenges for rescue services due to its remote and difficult to access nature. The incident occurred at approximately 11.15 a.m. when Jenny's Beechcraft 35, the aircraft she often showcased in her online content, crashed into the ground. The crash claimed the lives of both Jenny and James, with their bodies discovered near the wreckage of the single engine plane. Her Instagram bio provided insights into her aviation adventures, including details about the specific plane involved in the tragic incident. According to FlightAware.com, the ill-fated journey commenced from Island Home Airport in Knoxville at 10.48 a.m. on Thursday. The flight was intended to reach its destination at the airport in Pulaski. However, the journey took a tragic turn, culminating in a crash a little over an hour later. The grim details revealed by flight data indicated that they had covered a distance of 180 miles from Knoxville, their place of departure. The crash occurred a mere 10 miles away from the nearest airport landing, adding a tragic twist to the narrative. The proximity to a potential safe landing site underscored the sudden and unexpected nature of the accident. The aviation community and followers of TN Fly Girl were left mourning the loss of not just a pilot, but an individual who had shared the beauty of flight and the thrill of aviation with a wide audience. The incident served as a somber reminder of the inherent risks associated with the pursuit of one's passion, even in the skies. The tragedy struck days after Jenny shared a final video of her happily flying with her father. Just a month ago, she posted a video of her having to perform an emergency landing due to an aircraft malfunction at 4,000 feet. Are we going to make it? She chillingly asked her flight instructor after discovering that the plane's battery had died mid-flight. The aviation influencer remained calm and managed to land the plane safely. It's never happened to me before, Jenny later told her subscribers, adding a haunting layer to the sequence of events a mere month before the fatal crash. Despite the alarming circumstances, Jenny exhibited remarkable composure, successfully navigating the emergency and landing the plane safely. This previous brush with a potential disaster now added a poignant layer to the narrative, emphasizing the unpredictability inherent in aviation and the courage displayed by Jenny in the face of adversity. The tragic accident involving Jenny Blaylock has sparked a discussion on various issues within the aviation community, as highlighted in a post on Reddit. Some of the key topics raised include concerns about ensuring a sufficient level of basic airmanship in student pilots, the appropriate degree of automation for new aviators, and the potential impact of social media on aviation practices.
post on Reddit suggests that the accident may have involved difficulties with the autopilot system. There's an indication that Jenny might have been grappling with the autopilot function and potentially prioritizing the creation of YouTube videos over revisiting fundamental flying skills. Furthermore, the post mentions an interesting point about Jenny's experience with certified flight instructors, CFIs. It notes that she had gone through multiple CFIs and none of them had apparently emphasized the need to adjust power when using the autopilot. This raises questions about the adequacy of training and communication between instructors and students. The post suggests that such fundamental aspects should have been covered in training, or, at the very least, explicitly communicated to her, advising against the use of autopilot in certain situations. The circumstances surrounding the involvement of the trainer in the accident remain unclear based on the available information. However, the Reddit post provides insights into the broader issues within the aviation education system and prompts a reflection on the balance between technology, training, and the responsibilities of both instructors and students in ensuring safe flying practices. The contrast between the triumphant emergency landing and the subsequent tragic crash underscores the unpredictable and sometimes unforgiving nature of aviation, leaving the community of followers and aviation enthusiasts mourning the loss of a spirited individual who had shared both the highs and lows of her flying journey. The following is from the Aviation Investigation Preliminary Report. According to the report, no structural failure or stall to the engine was identified. The weather report showed clear skies on that fateful day. The preliminary report suggests a possible loss of control to the aircraft. You can decide for yourself. On December 7, 2023, at 11.03 Central Standard Time, CST, a Beach 35, C-33, and 5891J, was destroyed when it was involved in an accident near Pulaski, Tennessee. The private pilot and passenger sustained fatal injuries. The airplane was operated as a Title 14 Code of Federal Regulations Part 91 personal flight. The flight originated from Knoxville Downtown Island Airport, DKX, Knoxville, Tennessee, about 948 CST and was en route to Saline County Regional Airport, SUZ, Benton, Arkansas. Preliminary Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, ADSB, data revealed that after takeoff from DKX, the airplane climbed and turned to a ground track of 255 degrees, then leveled off for about 12 minutes at 2,500 foot mean sea level, MSL, before climbing to 6,400 feet MSL. The pilot was in contact with air traffic control and had requested flight following services. As the flight was about 140 nautical miles into the trip, the controller advised the pilot that she was left of course. The pilot acknowledged and responded that she was correcting. About 1019, the airplane entered the first of a series of climbs and descents with corresponding fluctuations in its observed ground speed. During these oscillations, which varied in magnitude, the airplane's altitude varied between about 6,400 feet and about 5,300 feet about 1057, the airplane entered a descent that arrested about 4,300 feet at a ground speed of 143 kts, after which it climbed to 6,050 feet and slowed to 85 kts. The airplane then began to descend rapidly before ADSB contact was lost in the vicinity of the accident site. During the last several seconds of the flight, the airplane was on a ground track of 262 degrees descending at a ground speed that reached a maximum of 228 kts, and the estimated maximum descent rate was about 11,900 feet per minute. During these altitude fluctuations, the controller twice provided instructions to the pilot to contact the Memphis Air Route Traffic Control Center, however, neither of the instructions were acknowledged by the pilot. During the final moments of the flight, a faint communication. Page 2 of 4 ERA 24 FA 058 This information is preliminary and subject to change. From the pilot stating the airplane's registration and debonair, followed by an emergency declaration and an unintelligible word. About 60 seconds later, a faint and largely unintelligible transmission from the passenger was transmitted. 
The controller's subsequent attempts to contact the pilot were unanswered, and there were no further communications from either the pilot or passenger. The airplane impacted hilly, wooded terrain at an elevation of 971 feet, with the wreckage path oriented on a heading of about 268 degrees magnetic. The wreckage was highly fragmented, and the debris field extended in a fan-like pattern about 300 feet long. The tops of several trees leading to the main wreckage were cut off at progressively lower heights leading up to the main impact with the ground. During the accident sequence, the fuel tanks were breached, and a post-impact fire spread in the vicinity of the wreckage to the surrounding trees and undergrowth. A witness in the vicinity of the accident site stated that the airplane flew overhead at a high rate of speed and described that the engine was running when it impacted the ground. All major components of the airplane were located at the accident site. The engine was partially buried in in a crater that was 5 feet deep by 8 feet wide. The engine was severely damaged by impact forces, and crankshaft continuity and cylinder compression could not be confirmed due to internal impact damage. The magneto key was broken off in the switch and set on both. Both magnetos separated from the engine during the accident sequence, were damaged by impact forces, and could not be functionally tested. The spark plugs were impact damaged but showed minimal wear when compared to the champion checker plug chart and did not display any evidence of carbon or lead fouling. The propeller blades separated from the hub during the impact sequence. One blade was buried in the impact crater, while the opposing blade was found 30 feet west of the main wreckage. The buried blade exhibited a significant bend with cordwise scraping and leading edge gouges. The opposing blade had a slight bend, and also exhibited cordwise scraping. The propeller hub showed rotational crushing damage. There was no evidence of an in-flight fire. The flight control system components from the cockpit to all control surfaces were significantly damaged or destroyed by impact forces and the post-impact fire. Flight control continuity could not be established, however, all observed breaks of the flight control cables displayed fracture features that were indicative of tensile overload, having broomstraw appearances consistent with impact-related separation. The elevator trim was measured and correlated to about 5 degrees of trim tab deflection in the nose-down direction. The rudder, left horizontal stabilizer, and elevator remained attached to the empennage, and were free to move when manually manipulated. Page 3 of 4 ERA 24 FA 058 This information is preliminary and subject to change. The cockpit was destroyed by impact forces and fire, and no flight instrumentation or gauges could be identified or recovered. The airplane was equipped with a Century 2000 autopilot, and while the instrument panel faceplate was identified, no settings of the autopilot could be determined. The autopilot servos were damaged by impact and fire. The wreckage, including two intact digital video recording devices, were retained for further examination. 